the levels themselves do a good job of trying not to be completely linear. This one uh, especially does a, a good job of having branching paths, plenty of secrets. Come on. And just... It, it doesn't seem like a circle, Die, but oversized gecko. in reality it is. Also, I'm not sure if it's stretching it, but I'm almost wanting to say that uh, whole Gecko reference might be a reference to uh, another game called Gex, which was out of the time, kind of a mascot platformer. But yeah, we're just going to head up here to get another secret. Eureka! Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a RPG that's going to be a very powerful weapon, and I'm great at jumping. So, yeah, um, sometimes the controls aren't the most accurate things in the world, and I'm sure if any of you have ever played, like, Tomb Raider 1 or any of the earlier Tomb Raiders, it's kind of the same thing where you kind of become set into a direction when you jump, and things like angles and more complex movements yeah they just don't really work within the engine they're given so but yeah we're back on track now after that little detour and I'm not really certain why all those enemies decided to poke their heads out of that one little doorway but you know it gave us a chance to weed out some guys that we're probably going to fate that we would have had to face later but yeah, this right here is the RPG. I'm just going to use it to take out a faraway gun turret. Gun, gun turrets are fairly annoying in that they take quite a bit of damage before they'll go down. So it's usually good to use one of the higher damage weapons, like a pipe bomb or an RPG round. And the RPG is actually a, a rather large uh, design difference from what it was in Duke Nukem 3D. As opposed to just being a, a normal gun, it's more of a shoulder-mounted cannon of sorts. It takes a bit of getting used to because the shots will alternate between the left and right and crystal. Another crystal. I'm starting a collection here. But yeah, these shots will alternate between the left and right, so if you're kind of getting cover between behind a wall and you just kind of duck out to get a shot, your next shot might easily blow up in your face if you're not paying attention. But yeah, we've actually got two out of the three crystals now, so we just have to find one more and uh, we should be good to go. And Gibbs. I mean, they're, they're very square Gibbs, but the, the game is pretty gory for the most part. There's actually, um, I think the gore settings in the option menu are like none, low, and lots of. So they they really wanted to uh, nail home the whole uh, gore level. This is our inventory screen. We're just going to pull out our night vision goggles to give this great night vision effect. As opposed to uh, Duke Nukem 3, 3D where the dark was not really that dark, the, the darkness... God, I'm saying dark a lot. But yeah, just uh, the dark in so Time to we... Kill is actually pretty fucking dark. You're not going to be able to see too well. And yeah, that inventory screen is beautiful, to say the least. For, for most of the weapons and things, you don't really need to access it and crane kick. That's, uh, the, the surprise is used to access challenge stages, which I will be in a separate here. video. But, uh, uh, getting back to it, the, uh, the weapons for the most part can be accessed just through, you know, scrolling with a particular button. For things like the med kit and night vision goggles and other things like that, you actually have to access the inventory menu and see that it's kind of just really not even implemented. <laughs> at all. But it's fine. It, it does its job. It keeps track of everything in a very rudimentary looking fashion, but, you know. This game this game is meant to be for its expert writing, its level design, its characterization. It's got so many other things going for it. The whole menu thing was just kind of on the back burner. Shut your hole. 
And there, as you can probably tell, there's quite a bit of one-liners that they uh, were able to put to the game. Like, a lot of the, the Duke Nukem 3D humor is here. So you'll have plenty of one-liners, plenty of, uh... Hmm, dry as a bow. It's just plenty of, uh, John St. John's wonderful voice acting. He, uh, he just seems like a very, you know, likable guy. Yeah, it looks like uh, we ran into another puzzle here where, for some reason, that particular uh, turning wheel, I'm trying, uh. <laughs> drawing a blank as the best way to uh, describe it, but I'll say wheel, kind of got us a, uh, a message that, you know, it's, it's bone dry there, there's no water, so looks like we'll have to go somewhere nearby to... Uh, get some water over there. Yeah, I don't really understand it, but it's a puzzle. Kind of. And the puzzle involves us just walking to a nearby room and turning another wheel. And for some reason that, that it causes, uh, like causes my emulator a bit of slowdown, but... You know, it's nothing too bad. I'm gonna go ahead and use a uh, med kit here. You can't really I feel good. stack a med kit, so usually if you need a little bit of health and you run to another med kit, you, know, you might as well use it. But yeah, we'll just backtrack into that uh, other wheel, give it a turn. I think it might also cause another little uh, hiccup in uh, the emulator. And with that, we uh, get to take a plunge off the side here. Trying to do it a little bit more dramatically. It didn't really work out. But yeah, the uh, the swimming mechanics, uh, they're a bit better than Duke Nukem 3D because swimming in a first-person shooter is awful. It's, uh, it's Tomb Raider swimming, so it's nothing too complex, but it, it also doesn't handle that well. So... But thankfully we don't have to do it too, for too long in this stage, because we're already at the last crystal. Now, to find out what these things do... And just I to cut out the little bit of swimming, because it's... Honestly, I'll try to do that as much as possible, because swimming is dull, and backtracking is dull. Unless there's things to shoot. And since we got a new crystal, that means that there are th going to be things to shoot. I'll try to do it with some flare while we kick open that door. They, uh, they do do quite a few things fairly creatively and well in this game. Uh, I kind of wish that the Mighty Boot was a little bit more useful, but... You know, it... It never, it never really was. It was mostly used for opening vents, or when you completely ran out of bullets. But they, they really did put quite a few animations in for it. They have kind of like this uh, hurricane kick, they have the crane kick, which you already saw, they have like just a roundhouse kick. And I'm great with pipe bombs. Yeah, um, <laughs> this was kind of an embarrassing moment. I, I, um, I meant to uh, just activate that pipe bomb to blow him up, but I ended up switching weapons, which pulls out another pipe bomb. And actually throwing the pipe bombs is a bit weird, because you either have a tiny baby softball toss, or you throw it at the max range. There doesn't seem to be an in-between, but I might just be doing it wrong. It's kind of hard to tell. But yeah. Actually, we are heading back to the uh, the crystal room itself. We're going to use those crystals and figure out what the hell's going on. Here goes nothing. I heard that, dude. Sadly, the other crystals don't get any witty comments. But with that last crystal, that'll actually be Time the end of the level. Time flies when you're kicking ass. And we'll see you next time on, uh, damn it.
Uh, next time on Duke Nukem, time to kill. <laughs>